Hey everyone, this is Steve with XRM Toolkit, bringing you another video about one of the many great features of XRM Toolkit. For today's video, I want to demonstrate how to create a solution to hold all of your different Dynamics 365 assets. I have Visual Studio open and I've already downloaded and installed the XRM Toolkit extension. If you don't have the extension, you'll want to go to xrmtoolkit.com where you can download it. With XRM Toolkit installed, a new menu appears under the extensions main menu. We're going to select the create new solution option. This will open up a wizard that will guide you through the process of setting up your solution. On the first screen, you'll set all the different fields for connecting to your Dynamics 365 instance. The XRM Toolkit display name is the one that will be used by XRM Toolkit in the menu items as well as the connection dialog when you go to log on to this organization after opening this solution again. You'll notice that there are several different options for how to authenticate. I'm going to use the D365 online option as this is the one that will allow me to connect to my test instance. Simply enter in the username and password and we're all set. You can also change the connection protocol under the advanced tab, but you shouldn't really need to change this. Go ahead and hit the next button. If everything was entered properly, then you'll be connected to your instance and be able to select the active solution for this Visual Studio solution. What you're doing here is selecting a solution that perhaps you're focusing on or working in on your Dynamics 365 environment. This is used by XRM Toolkit to determine what assets to download as well as what solution to push to when you create new assets. If you don't have a particular solution that you're working with, then you can go ahead and select the default solution. This can always be changed later, so you don't need to worry about it too much here. I've got a demo solution set up already, and so that's the one I'm going to use here. The next page allows you to set up the default settings that will be used by XRM Toolkit for this organization. The defaults for these settings actually come from the global settings, which you can change by clicking on the link. I'm going to leave everything as it is and move on. The next page allows you to specify the name and location of the solution, as well as which projects you'd like XRM Toolkit to set up for you. I'm going to select all of them so that we can walk through how each of them are created. If the report project is showing as unavailable, then it means that the proper prerequisites have not been installed. You'll want to see Microsoft's documentation regarding what needs to be installed in order for that project type to be available. The first project to be created is an assets project. You can change the name and location of the project here, but I'm going to leave the defaults. XRM Toolkit is now creating the project and loading any resources that have already been added to the solution. Since the demo solution does not have anything in it yet, the only possible items that show are proxy classes and TypeScript IntelliSense files. These assets are local assets only, and so they will always show regardless of what is selected for the solution filter. I'd like to download some assets from the default solution, and so I'm going to change the solution filter dropdown to the default solution. XRM Toolkit now loads all the assets in the default solution. Notice that a new checkbox appears below the solution filter dropdown that allows you to specify whether or not you want the items that you download to automatically be added to the active solution, which in this case is demo. I'm going to leave that selected so that anything we download will be added where appropriate. Also notice the other tabs near the top. These are the same settings that we choose for the organization, but we have the option here to override them if we would like to. I'm going to leave everything as it is and go back to the main tab and select some items. I also want to point out the ability to search and filter the items in the list. If you type something in this box, you'll notice that the items in the list are filtered to only include items with that term. 
I'm going to go ahead and select several items for demo purposes. Once I have all of the items selected, press the Add Items button and XRM Toolkit will start to do its magic and download everything to your project. So we've completed the process of creating our assets project and now the Add New Project dialog opens again and we can now configure our plugin project. Once again, I'm going to leave the defaults and hit the Create Project button. A new wizard opens up here where we can configure our first plugin for this project. Let's name our plugin Account Create Plugin and leave the defaults. It's going to load all the SDK messages so that we can choose a message event from the dropdown. We'll choose Create and then select the Account Entity. Notice that the step name has been named for us based on the step name template, which is configurable. We're not going to go through those settings at this time, so we'll go ahead and leave everything as it is. Notice that we have an advanced tab and an information tab where we can change additional properties. It asks us if we want to generate proxies for the account entity, and we'll go ahead and select yes. Again, we can override the organization settings or just leave them as the default, which we'll do. A summary of what will be created by XRM Toolkit is displayed. So it says it's going to create the plugin class and a proxy class. We're now being prompted to create the report project. We'll leave the defaults just like we did for the other ones. A window similar to the window that was shown for our assets project appears. Again, based on the solution filter, it only shows the reports for that solution. So we're gonna go ahead and change to the default solution so that we can download some reports. I'll just select a couple here and click the add items button. Okay, the reports project was created and now we're being prompted to create a Canvas app project. This window is similar to the other windows, but it also shows a list of the Canvas apps available in our Dynamics 365 environment. I've only got one Canvas app, and so I'll go ahead and select it. I'm also going to change the name of the project slightly to add the name of the Canvas app to it. Now, this process takes a bit longer as behind the scenes, XRM Toolkit is creating an unmanaged solution, adding the Canvas app to it, downloading the solution, extracting the contents out of the solution, finding the .msapp file for the Canvas app, and finally extracting all of the contents into the newly created project. You can now see that we have four projects in our solution. If we right click on the solution, you'll notice a new D365 menu with several actions that you can take against the entire solution one of which is the ability to create additional projects. If you right click on the assets project, it also has a D365 menu with actions that you can take against that project. Many are similar to the solution menu, but some are different. The D365 menu for a Canvas app is different than that for other linked projects. It only contains actions that pertain directly to a Canvas app, mainly that of packing the assets back up and publishing to Dynamics 365, or to refresh the current project with what is currently deployed to Dynamics 365. You can see that the items in our assets project were downloaded to their appropriate folder. Right-clicking on a linked item also reveals a D365 menu that pertains just to that asset. Okay, that concludes our video for today. We'll go through each of the different project types in detail in other videos. As always, if you thought this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.